session 19 of the book of numbers and we continue with uh, numbers 14 remember israel said um they don't want to take the promised land because they're too scared for their children and Jehovah answers them in verse 31 of numbers 14 and he said but your little ones which you said should be a prey to these giants uh, giants them i will bring into the promised land and they shall know the land which you have despised so the parents has basically despised the promise of this beautiful land that Jehovah wanted to give them for an eternal inheritance because they were too scared and we looked at fear and we looked at trust and faith so we understand here that to not trust Jehovah in his eyes is like we are despising the promises that he makes his promises are not good enough for us and therefore we choose well in this case our forefathers chose to not take him up on his word and in the eyes of Jehovah that's like you are hating him you are hating his words you are not trusting him enough to think that he will keep his word and that is why he said you despise the land so your children whom you was afraid for they will actually have enough faith under Joshua to at the end of the day take up this land and we also must not stand in fear for our children because if we are going to make the same excuses not to obey God because we are scared for our children we will also just like them not enter into the promised land and here I remind you again that we the children of Israel the ones who follow after these forefathers so many years ago in the wilderness we will in the last days in the tribulation times we will go forth we are the children the little ones that comes after these adults we will go forth and finally we will show Yahuwah that we do trust him we will do right by him we will do right by his terms and his conditions and his covenants and we will love his promises and we will believe and obey and trust him and we the children of this and the following generation we will stand firm in our faith and we won't allow the enemies of our God to scare us or to strangle us with fear so that we fall in disobedience or distrust towards Yahuwah that's why Yahuwah gave us Deuteronomy 4 because he says in verse 30 when you are in tribulation remember after he has scattered us because of disobedience when you are in tribulation in the last days and all these things are coming upon you all these things that's prophesied all over those scriptures if you then in the latter days turn back to Yahuwah your Elohim and start being obedient unto his voice because Yahuwah your Elohim is a merciful God then he will not forsake you he will not destroy you and he will not forget the covenant of your fathers which he swore upon them and that's why we have the um, security and the surety of his promise and his prophecy here in Deuteronomy that says the children of the disobedient parents when they listen to his voice they will actually inherit the covenant that he made to the fathers absolutely beautiful all right let's continue with numbers 14 from verse 39 so Moses told all these sayings unto the children of Israel and the people started crying and they mourned and they complained and they were now very sorry that they didn't listen to Yahuwah and now the next verse they rose up early in the morning they got them together at the top of the mountain and they said now we are here let us go up into the place that Yahuwah has promised for we have sinned now we are ready sorry yesterday we were a bit scared but now Yahuwah has given us all this um, penalties and he's sending us back into the desert we don't want to go back into the desert no now today we are deciding that we will actually take God up on his promise and we are going to go into the place we are going to enter the land of Canaan and we are going to take it for ourselves really Moses said wherefore now this morning why do you now transgress the commandment of Yahuwah <laughs> it's not gonna work 
Yesterday, he transgressed his commandment to go in. Then he said, okay, you don't want to go in, so leave it. Go back to the desert. Now this morning, you want to transgress his commandment again to go back into the desert? Now you want to go in? No, it's not going to work. So he says, go, um, do, do not go up. Go not up. For Yahuwah is not with you. You will be smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you. You will fall by their sword. Because why? Why will you fall? Because you turned away from Yahuwah. Therefore, if you turn away from Yahuwah, it's not his fault, but he is not with you. We need to turn back to him, because then we are in his presence. But when we turn away from him, we are not in his presence. It's not his fault. He's not the one leaving us. We left him. So how can we say he is with us if we turned our back? But, verse 54, they presumed in their arrogance and in their feigned um, obedience and suddenly they now trust God. They presumed to go up onto the hill. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah departed not from out of the camp. So you remember also that whenever there was a war or there was a battle, then the priests that were carrying the Ark always went before uh, with their trumpets, sounding their trumpets and uh, making the way for the whole army to go into battle. But in this case, sorry, sorry guys, um, the Ark of the Covenant is staying right where Yahuwah said it must stay. And then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelled in that land and they smote them and they discomforted them even unto Hormah. So they basically chased them all the way back and to Horma, and they killed most of them. And Jehovah is not happy with this. Um, and Moses is not happy with this. He explains what happened here in Deuteronomy, um, chapter 1, verse 43. So I spoke unto you, but you would not listen. But you rebelled against the commandment of Jehovah, and you went presumptuously up unto the hill. And the Amorites who dwelt in that mountain came out against you and chased you, <laughs> almost like a bunch of bees. They chased you like bees would chase you and you ran away like you would run away from a swarm of bees. If only we listened to his Torah, the Torah that he gave in Exodus already. Now here in Numbers, we are being chased by a swarm of bees. Instead of, like the Torah says, Exodus 23, verse 27, I will send my fear to go before you, and the fear that I sent to go before you will destroy all the people to whom you will come, and I will make all your enemies to turn their backs onto you. So if they turn their backs onto Israel, it means they're running away from Israel. And God says in his Torah, if you fear me and if you obey me, I will send a swarm of hornets. Do you know that a bee, a bee sting is, is quite painful? But a sting from a hornet, it's ten times more painful. And God said, if you obey my voice, I will send hornets before you. And the hornets will drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, um, and all your enemies from before you. But if you don't listen to my voice, then they will chase you away like a swarm of bees. I, if only they listened. In, in Exodus, they got the commandment. But so, later on in Numbers, they totally forgot about it. That's why the Bible says we have to remember the commandments of God. We have to remember his promise that he will send hornets out before us to chase our enemies away. Remember what Rahab said um, by the time the spies came into her house. She said that all of us in this land melted with fear because Jehovah said he will send his fear before them. So they were already prepared to meet this amazing um, uh, nation that's coming with this amazing God that's going to give them victory. And they were already shivering with fear. But because we didn't believe Yahuwah, we were fearful of them instead of understanding how fearful they were already.
because of Yahuwah's promise that he will bring fear upon them. But yeah, this is his promise. Not only for them, but also for us in the last days. Because remember, Deuteronomy says, in the last days, when you turn back to me, I will not forsake you. So let us therefore keep the feast of Yom Teruah. This is now the season of Yom Teruah. This is September 2021. Let us remember the promises and the um, instructions of these feasts. Let us blow the ram's horn and blow the trumpets, knowing that we can trust all his promises. Not only the promises that he made in the wilderness for us, but the promise that he will return. The promise that he will judge his enemies and our enemies. And his promise that he will um, enter the city of David in glorious victory. This is the lessons we have to learn from the ancient history of our forefathers. All right, we're not going to go through chapters 28, 29 and 30. We discussed that during the Torah sessions. It's all about the offerings about vows and promises. And now we skip to chapter 31 from verse 3. And Moses spoke unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord for the Midianites. Avenge the glory of Yahuwah against the Midianites. So we are here being instructed to fight for his honor, to avenge our God's honor against the Midianites. Verse 4, of every tribe, of each one of the 12 tribes, you will send a thousand. Only a thousand men will arm themselves for the war out of the tribes of Israel. So they were delivered out of the thousands of Israel, a thousand of every tribe. 12,000 then went to war. This reminds me a lot of the army of God in the end times. The 144,000 of the book of Revelation, they also from every tribe. There was not a thousand taken, but 12,000 from every tribe. Moses sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe. And Phineas, remember Phineas, the passionate priest of Yahuwah, he was the leader. And Phineas was... Um, equipped with the holy instruments and the trumpets which he was blowing. The trumpets was in his hands. So Phineas, the leader of this army of 12,000, who is a um, soldier priest, has the trumpets in his hand. And that's why we keep the Feast of Trumpets, because the Feast of Trumpets not only teach us that it's a sound of war, but it's also a sound of victory. And it's a sound to the glory of our king. Yahuwah's army was led by this priestly soldier, a man that has a passion for Yahuwah. And what is found in the hand of men that has a passion for Yahuwah? A shofar or a trumpet. Trumpet in the Hebrew, in your English translations, a lot of times when it says trumpet and you click on it, you will actually find the Hebrew word shofar. So we learn about the Feast of Trumpets and how the prophesies all the prophecies of our king that's coming back with a sword in his hand. And although he's the high priest, like Phineas was a priest, he's also the man that comes with a sword, the Lord of hosts, the master of the armies. And he's blowing on a trumpet when he returns. Remember how um, Matthew in Matthew 24, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and in 1 Thessalonians 14, it says that at the last trumpet... When the last trumpet blows, he will come back and gather his people. So to learn more about the Feast of Trumpets, just register um, at www.twotreesinthegarden.co.za and, um, and let me know that you want to learn more about the Feast of Trumpets. Not only did they kill all the enemies, but see who else they killed. Do you remember Biliam, the son of Beor? Do you remember what he did? How he tried to curse them? And how he did it for money. So finally his deeds came back upon his own head. Because in verse 8 it says. They slew Biliam the son of Beor with the sword. Let's continue with Numbers 31 from verse 9. The children of Israel took all the women of Midian captive. And their little ones. And they took the spoil of the cattle and the flocks and all their goods. But God said, destroy the Midianites. 
So Moses and Eliezer, the priest, and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet these 12,000 men outside the camp when they came back victoriously from the battle. And Moses was very angry with the leaders, with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands, the captains over hundreds, because they took what they were not supposed to. As leaders of thousands and leaders over hundreds and leaders of our families, we need to obey the commandment of God. When he says, destroy everything, then we destroy everything. When he says, take the spoil, then we take the spoil. But there's a time and a place for everything. He allows us what he wants to allow us. And Moses said unto them, Why have you saved all the women? Behold, these women, these Midianite women, during the time of Biliam, has caused the children of Israel through the counsel, through the, um, the, the counsel that Biliam gave to Balak, the king. Remember, he gave him advice. Sorry, I can't uh, curse them. Just send in your Midianite prostitutes. All right. So Moses said, have you forgotten what they've done? Have you forgotten these Midianite prostitutes? How they forced Israel to commit trespasses against Yahuwah um, in the matter of Beor, uh, Peor, Baal Beor, in that area. And there came a great plague among the congregation of Yahuwah. Remember, that was when Yahuwah sent a plague upon into the camp of Israel because of these Midianite prostitutes that they were fooling around with. And um, that's where uh, Aaron, remember, had to run with the incense in his hand. And he actually had to run over the, the dead people as they fell dead of the plague. He had to run to try and get um, before the plague so that the, he could stop the plague with the um, incense that was burning in the, in the holder. And really, how stupid could they be? They, they've just won the battle. They've just learned when they were sent back into the wilderness that they have to obey God. And here they do exactly what has caused a plague amongst them before. Have they still not learned not to disobey Yahuwah, not to mix with Babylon, not to allow the horde of Babylon, the women of abominations, into their camp and into their lives? The, this abomination, this horde of Babylon, this horde of the Canaanite, Midianite um, religious system will steal you away from Yahuwah. Why can't you love Yahuwah with all your heart and just be satisfied with a beautiful, pure and godly Israelite woman that is inside the camp? Is it because they were lusting after the prostitutes and that kind of life? Don't they remember what Pinias did with the man who brought the Midianite princess into his tent? Why don't they learn from their own mistakes? And that is why God says the generation of the last days will learn from this first evil generation. We learn from this. We keep ourselves pure. We obey Yahuwah. We cannot mix with Midian. We cannot mix with Canaan. We cannot let their um, whoring and their religious prostitution into our lives. Okay, we're going to jump to verse uh, 22 next. Of the spoil that um, they could take from, from Midian, they were actually only allowed to take the precious metals. Verse 22, only the gold, the silver, the brass, the iron, the tin and the lead. Don't get rid of that. Everything that can survive a fire, very important. The only things they were allowed to, to keep um, safe and not get rid of they weren't allowed to take the women. They weren't allowed to take, you know, the rest of the of the loot. Um, but they were allowed to take the precious metals. Because everything that can survive the fire, you shall make it go through the fire. And the fire will cleanse the precious metals. Nevertheless, it shall be purified with the water of separation. And all that can survive not the fire you shall make go through the water so fire and water is the the cleansing the purifying uh, system that is used to cleanse all these precious metals 
And um, yeah, Yeshua um, baptizes with fire and John baptized with water. And, oh, this is all so significant. And just like the precious metals, just like silver and gold and brass, who were, um, because remember these, these uh, precious metals came now from the Midianites and it had to be purified before it could be used in the camp or in the tabernacle of Yahuwah. So we are the same. Before we come into the camp of Israel, we were in the camp of the Canaanites or the Midianites or the Amalekites because any other religion and, and all disobedience is um, people that find themselves under the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the moment you come away from that tree and you come into the camp of the tree of life, you have to go through purification. So just like these precious metals, we who were before in idolatry and disobedience, and we who before were dead in our sins, we must be washed by the living waters, which is the living Torah. But washing alone is not enough. Um, because washing can, can purify the precious metals of stuff that can be washed off. But what about the impurities that is still on the inside? So to cleanse on the outside is the water, but to clean on the inside is the fire. Matthew 3, 11, I indeed, John says, baptize you with water unto repentance. So repentance brings the washing of baptism, of water. So repentance washes away your sin. All right. But there's, there's more needed to purify you really, to change your character, to change you in such a way that you become holy. Holy is kadosh, separated, purely and exclusively separated for use in the worship um, of Yahuwah and for um, effective use in the work of his kingdom. So yes, John baptized with water unto repentance. But he that comes after me is mightier than me. So John could make people go through the baptism when they repent of their sin and that can bring them inside the camp. So also the same with us. If we repent of our sin and the water, the living water, which is Yeshua, washes us clean, we're inside the camp. But we are not dedicated yet to be used as holy instruments that's made of precious metals in the hand of God. So washing of the water by repentance bring you in the camp. But then to go into, the, um, into that deep level of service where you come closer and closer into his presence. And you can, you can um, mean more for his kingdom that only comes through fire and that is a mightier work than just washing with repentance repentance is the first step lots of people think that when they bow before the cross and they repent of their sin that is the end no bowing before Yeshua repenting of your sin receiving forgiveness getting washed clean by the water is only the beginning and only for those who has the so much love and so much passion for Yahuwah, only they are really willing to go the extra step of being purified by fire. Because those who are washed by water is inside the camp. Um, it's nice and cozy. It's not a problem. You are still saved. Um, you're going to be. You are, you belong to the kingdom of God. But if you want to serve him, if you want to help um, all his servants and his disciples in spreading his truth and in working in the camp, maybe with hard labor or working as the priests, helping people to bring sacrifices or working like Moses, teaching people the word, teaching children how to get to know this God, teaching what's wrong and what's right so we can live a holy life. If you want to go to the, to the next step and if you want to be a good and faithful servant, 
Washing with water alone is only the first step. And then you have to be willing to die to yourself and be burnt by the fire. Because the fire that will burn everyone up in judgment, it's the same fire that you are willing to have burned in your life now so that it can burn away all the impurities um, so that you don't sit in the judgment fire when that comes one day. Because the Bible also says, um, uh, I think I've got the verse a little bit later on, that all the work that you have done for Yahuwah, all the work that you have done in your life, if it was built with straw and wood, then the fire of judgment is going to burn it up. And you're going to stand empty-handed without a gift, without a sacrifice before Yahuwah. But if your work was done and it's built with precious metals and gold and silver, then the fire will not burn it up. And then the um, productiveness of your work will be tested and proved by the fire. So John says, yes, indeed, I do baptize you with water, but I am not as mighty to baptize you with fire. The one that comes after me is mightier than me, and he shall baptize you with the Ruach HaKodesh and with fire. So we go through water baptism and it's good. We have to. There's no other way. We cannot come into the camp without being washed clean. But then to just be satisfied with that, it's, it's like, remember when we discussed the, um, the camp, the people that's far on the outside of the camp, they're still part of the camp. But the people that had a, a desire to get to know God better and to be closer to God, they had to move closer and closer um, in the camp, closer to the burning flame of the pillar of fire um, above the Ark of the Covenant, um, right inside the tabernacle. And therefore you have to go through all those covenants. You know, rem Remember, the covenant of blood, the covenant of peace, the covenant of a friendship, the covenant of the bride. You have to go through those processes and, and every time you come closer and closer, you are being burned and burned more. Not to kill you, but to purify you. And that's why going through that um, purification process so that God can make um, and form you as he wants you in the specific calling that he has for you. You have to be willing to come close to the altar fire. You have to be willing to come close to the Shekinah presence, the fire that's, uh, that's inside the tabernacle. Because he that comes after me, says John, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, with the Ruach HaKodesh, and with fire. Matthew 3, 12. Because the fan is in his hand, this one that's coming after me, and he will thoroughly purge, cleanse, purify his floor. He will gather his wheat into the garner, but with his fire he will burn up the chaff. So when you go through that purification process of this man who's got the fan in his hand, then he will, he will either be able to take you as the wheat and bake bread with you, crush you like you crush wheat to make flour and then you can bake a bread and the bread can actually mean something for the people. Or you will be the chaff that will be burnt by the fire. So it's worth it to try and go through this fire. And it's not for us to say, oh no, I want to go through the fire. It's for you to give yourself as wheat so that he can gather you, use you. Remember when, when um, in the Bible, uh, in Jeremiah, God says, who can I send? Who will speak to the people for me? And if we're in the camp, you know, about three million people will, will just remain sitting in their tents. Because they, they're too scared. How many disciples left Yeshua? And the ones that, that stayed behind, all of them went through this baptism of fire. All of them, besides John, eventually was, was killed for the work that they were doing in the kingdom. But rather let the fire of, burn, of God burn us clean than the fire of God 
when he comes back and he says, your evil and lazy servant. And then we stand in judgment of his judgment fire. John uh, Job 23 verse 10. But he knows the way that I take. God knows the way that I'm walking. He knows the work that I'm doing. Because when he tried me, when he tested me, when he purified me, when he allowed challenges and situations and persecutions and problems to come over me, he tried me as you um, purify gold in fire. And Job says, God knows my ways because when he tried me, I came forth as gold. So Job actually survived the fire, the baptism of fire that Yahweh brought aloud in his life. And Job came through the fire as gold. He wasn't burned up in the fire. He didn't give up. When the flame becomes hot, are me and you going to give up? Or are we going to endure all the way to the end with whitewashed clothes and hands um, dirty because we worked so hard for his kingdom? Because Daniel 11 verse 35, I love this verse. Many of them who has understanding... Yes, although they've got understanding and, of, and although they are teaching um, the truth of God's word and although they understand the prophecies, they understand the good um, and the benefit of the Torah and they understand the, the promises of this walk that we have until we are no longer on this earth, whether we die or whether Yeshua comes back. They, with understanding, many of them shall fall. Why will God allow that? We saw this in Matthew. We saw it in Job. Now we see it again in Daniel. Why will God allow his poor little servant children to fall? Because Daniel explains. And remember, Daniel is prophesying of the end times. Daniel says in the end times... Many of them with, with understanding will fall under the weight of the persecution. But that falling, it's not falling away from God. It's falling under the weight. They try and they work and they believe and they've got faith. Like Joshua and Caleb, not like the rest of the, of the nation. And that, that weight that will pressurize them. Daniel 11.35 says, They will fall to try them, to test them, to purge them, to purify them, to make them white. Because the fire purges gold and silver and tin and brass and lead. It, it, it melts it. So it becomes in a form that God can actually use and make something with. So many of them with understanding shall fall. To try them. To purge them. And to make them white. This will happen at the time of the end. This will happen at the time appointed. The appointed times. But it is not yet time. Beautiful. Daniel 11.35. Go and underline it in your book. And understand how we now eat... Um, the Bible says God's words are purified seven times more than gold. So we have to eat this gold, this word. It has to become gold inside of us. So that when we are tried and tested and purged and purified. So, so that we as Job can come through the fire. White and clean and purified like a spotless bride. We have to endure through the time of the end. We have to understand the appointed times, the seasons, and the prophecies, and the warnings of, of what is lying ahead for the people of God. Because God says in uh, Zechariah 13 verse 9, I will bring a third part, 33%, I will bring through the fire. A third part, I will refine them as silver is refined. I will test 
them. I will try them in fire like gold is tried. These people that are refined as silver and tried as gold shall call on my name. And when they call on my name, I will hear them. And when I hear them, I will answer them. And I will say to them, you are my people. And they will answer and say, you are our God. So we need to listen to the voice of God now. And we need to answer the voice of God now. Whom shall I send? God, you are my master. Send me. And yes, we are going to go through fire. But God promises a third will go through fire, will be refined. But they will be made pure. And they will say, you're my God. I choose you above everything this world has to offer me. Even I choose you above myself. Love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Not love God as you love yourself. Love God with everything you have. But love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because when you love Yahuwah, you give like Romans 12 says, you give your body as a living sacrifice that he can burn with his purifying fire on the altar. And there's a sweet smelling flavor that will come from that. And we are that sweet smelling flavor flavor for those who come to repentance but for the rest of the world we are the stench of death when that is burned and it, it makes that that flavor that causes people to repent those people that do not want to repent for them you'll be a stench of death but in the nostrils of those who repent and in the nostrils of God himself you are a sweet smelling flavor 1 Corinthians 3 verse 12. If any man build upon this foundation, the, what is the foundation? The rock, the Torah, Yeshua, the word of God that's purified seven times more than gold. When you build upon this foundation, whether you build with gold, silver, precious stones, or whether you build with wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day, the day of judgment shall declare it. The day of judgment will show what you built on the foundation. Because your work will be revealed by fire. And the fire will try, will test, and will reveal every man's work of what sort that work was. So we work for a living God. We allow the fire of daily persecutions and end time persecutions. We allow that because we understand the promises of God as we stand here with Joshua and Caleb before the land of Canaan. We don't run away in fear because we are scared for our children. We stand with Joshua and Caleb and say, with my God, I will take over these giants. They are nothing. They are grasshoppers. We are not the grasshoppers. God will send hornets under them. We must go because the fear of God goes before us. 1 Peter 1 verse 7. So the trials of your faith, the trials, the persecution, the testing of your faith, your faith that is so much more precious than gold, that faith, which is more precious than gold, will be tried by fire. So the Bible is telling us this is going to happen. None of us can escape it. Your faith will be tried by fire. And then it will be found, it will be revealed. If your faith that's tried by fire is unto praise and honor and glory by the time Yeshua appears again. So we have to build our faith now while it is still while there's still time. And we have to work now while it is still day. Because night comes and then nobody can work anymore. And then the fire is going to reveal what work we have done for him. Revelation 3 verse 18. I counsel you to buy from me, says Yeshua. Buy from me gold that has already been tested and tried in fire. 
so that you can be rich. Buy from me white raiment so that you can be clothed, so that your, the shame of your nakedness does not appear. And buy from me eye salve, eye ointment, ointment for your eyes, so that you can see. And this ointment for our eyes, our eyes to be opened to the revelation of his true word. That is what we need to do now. And his gold, his word, his Torah, that is purer than gold. We have to buy that now so, so that we can be rich. And we have to buy the white clothes now so that we can be clothed. And the nakedness of our disobedience from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the nakedness of our fear when we stood before the um, land of Canaan. That must be clothed with white clothing. Because that is what it's about to go through the fire and through the testing. So that we can receive these things that comes out of the fire. And we can serve Yahuwah with that. As a man digs up gold. And because the gold is dirty. He has to wash it. But after he washed it. He has to melt it in a furnace. So that all the impurities can get out. Before he can fashion um, this gold into a precious holy ornament. So Yahuwah searched for us. He dug us out of the darkness, out of the earth, out of the ignorance we were in. He dug us out of death. He washed us clean of our sin. And now he's preparing us to be purified by the baptism of fire. Why is he doing that? Hebrews 12 verse 14. Follow holiness. Because without holiness, no man will ever see Yahuwah. That purified gold can now be used in the holy, the set-apart ministry of the tabernacle. So we, purified, can now be used by our high priest inside the tabernacle of Yahuwah. Only purified gold is good enough to enter into the holy of holies. But we were not pure when we started. He's the one that makes us pure. He's the one that washes us clean. And he is with us while he is allowing the trials and the tribulation of the baptism of fire to burn us clean. So while he's with us, he makes us holy. We are made holy by him. So we can see him when he returns to tabernacle with us on this earth. <laughs>